Hi everybody and a big welcome to CDH TV gameplay. Today, me, Pontus and Redrick as always are joined by Keith. Hi everyone. Hi, so I'll be playing Emoti. This is one of those weird decks that got too strong for casual. So we'll see how it does in competitive. The idea is cast Emoti, cascade into big spells, stop people with free spells that also will cause Emoti to cascade more. Oddly enough, this is a swing to win, but... CDH decks tend to not do well being punched in the face with a 6-6, six -six, so might have a chance. We'll see what ends up happening. I'm kind of curious. Hey, I'm back with Woe Storm, or The Shape of Water, one of my favorite decks here to play. Teamer, Elena, and Thrasios. We're trying to generate infinite mana with Elena's ability and stick it into something like Walking Ballista, and Alley Devastation, things of that sort. A lot of fun to play, so I'm looking forward to playing it again. <laughs> So I'm continuing exploring the newest hotness and probably one of the best commanders in the format, that is Francisco. Uh, we still have the Agatha Soul Cauldron and Walking Ballista line to make infinite damage. We have some cute tutors that finds both of them and puts one in graveyard, one in hand. And other than that, we're just a Mardu Lurus Nas Breach Shell. So it, it's it has to be decent, right? So I recently made a video I'm very happy about about Francisco and, well, maybe Pontus didn't see it. Regardless, I'm playing Monred Inti, which is hard to place how good it's going to work, be and how good it's going to work, but it's basically a discard storm commander of sorts. So I kind of actually like this hand. So we have a lot of lands, that's not great, but we have Lotus Petals, so we will get our commander to play turn one, then Ruby Medallion, like turn 2, or Thrill of Possibilities. The thing is that a lot of lands in his hand isn't a big problem, because we will be discarding them away. That's like the whole comp idea with this deck, discard cards in general. So discard lands to draw into other cards. And with lots of lands in our hand, we're de decreasing the chance of drawing into lands later. So yeah, I, I like it. Let's look at starting 7. This 7 has some cards they really want. Having the color in hand is kind of cute. But we don't have any colored mana. We, we, we're far off from Nas. So yeah, this just isn't, isn't here. So let's go to second summon. A very good hand if we had lands. That's it, goes. This isn't keepable in this current state. Let's go to six. Since we don't have any card advantage in our command zone, this hand where we just sit back and control isn't really viable for us. So we're going to five. We're getting all the bad hands today, apparently. It's weird, our commander is like one of the best in the format. How can we get bad hands? I don't get this. Um, but yeah, this has two lands and the front plunge. Like, we can't, we can barely even cast the spells in our hand unless we top the lands. So I think a four will almost always be better than this. So let's look at it. This four is fine. It's, it's nothing to write home about, but it's like, okay. Uh, so we're always keeping it as we are in a four and going to three, it's even riskier. Uh, we're probably just keeping two lands, Grim Monolith. No, it's probably an E2 to Dark Rit, and just hope to draw into action. Sadly, we, we are on Lurus, otherwise we would just go for a turn 2 Necro. But as we're on Lurus, we can't run 3 drops, so that's not an option for us, which is sad. One of the big downsides with running Lurus. So yeah, we're just in top deck mode. We wish we had Aristic or Mystic in the deck, but we're in Mardu. So, yeah, we're kind of just fa failing to the limitations of our deck. Maybe just play good colors. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, I, I'm, I'm going to stop here. I don't think we have much EV to get by going lower. Mons might wheel. And I think this will be a longer game anyways. So we might have a chance to just crawl our way back. Maybe we'll just get like a Wish Claw, because we kind of have we kind of have Nas Man on turn 3. Yeah, let's see what happens. Let's try it. All right, let's go to first hand. Absolutely not. We're going to go to first mulligan. This is not going to work. All right, let's see. Can't be counterspelled. This, two lands. Stop someone from winning at instant speed. Fix hand. Go get more stuff. Doesn't win, but it goes places. Are any of these places good? Probably not. Um, I think this is where I sit. Because turn one, nothing, turn two, talisman into worldly tutor. And then after that, if I can't do anything, I sit on trick bind. Yeah. Yeah, I think this is what I keep. Because Scroll Rack can send away anything I don't care about. Yeah. Yeah. I talked myself into it. Probably a bad idea. I have a pretty game effect, Gemstone Caverns. And I will exile. Yeah. Not for you can't refuse. 
draw a card for the turn. Let's begin with a mountain. Tap that for a red. Cast a Lotus Petal. Tap that for red. Cast a Commander. And then I pass the turn. Go to my turn. Land for turn will be a Command Tower. And then I will pass turn. We're going to draw. We're going to... I'm going to start off by playing an island. We're going to tap that. We're going to play Mono Vault. I will pass the turn. Draw a card for turn. Land for turn will be Mana Confluence. We'll take a damage. Tapping Gemstone Caverns as well. To cast Thrasios. And then I will pass Yos with four cards in hand. We'll go to my turn. Play this snow-covered mountain. I'm going to combat. Pontus is the only black player. <laughs> Punch Pontus. I'm going to discard this mountain to increase my commander's power and toughness by one. But I'm also going to exile a emergency zone. That will go to exile. I'm tiny misplayed there by me actually playing the land here first. No blocks, take three. Post combat main phase, casting a ruby medallion and passing the turn. In your end step, I'll tap command tower for white to cast a, a, a line tutor. A line tutor resolves. Finding this walking ballista. Putting it on top. Then going to my turn. I'll play a ancient tomb as land for turn. I'll tape, tight, tap it, taking two to cast a walking ballista, XS1. Then I'll pass turn. And <laughs> work. Untap, upkeep, draw. We're going to play Yavamaya, so everyone has the gift of force. Congratulations. And then we're going to tap five and cast my commander. When I cast Emoti, I cascade. So we'll cascade for card four or less. Uh, Beast Within. Actually, I think you should destroy a land with that thing. I mean, it's like killing Francis or my commander doesn't. I mean, the land here is kind of impactful. I'm looking at. I'm looking at Agent Tomb. It's either. Mons, <laughs> how are you saying that? You're clearly in the lead. I'm moving to four. I enlightened two to four, walking ballista. Come on, dude. I'm playing. I know you hate me, <laughs> but like, that's just wrong. I'm playing. <laughs> On the red. <laughs> yeah, I'd say that, you have your game plan going. Yeah, I'd say I, I would say the person noting to have a land destroyed is the same person who is probably ahead of us because he's got card advantage with his commander. He's got a rock as well. Walking ballista My... is scary, and yes, I also said, but like um, I'm fourth. I'm 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 behind you guys already. So I'd say like, but if you're trying to slow get people on your level, I might suggest looking at Mons and his resources. <laughs> so the thing is, is that I actually answer Mono Red turning sideways best because I just play big <laughs> dudes and cast big spells. So I will actually answer him better than probably either of your decks. I think that that means it's either going to be the uh, Gemstone Caverns, Thrasios, or Ancient Tomb are on the shopping block. Thrasios isn't online for a little bit, it looks like. Uh, a little bit longer if I hit the cavern, the gemstone caverns. I don't think Francis is gonna be online for a while. I mean, it's yeah, he needs to go another land. I like, I don't know. I think Pontus is in a better position compared to Redrick. I think. How? He just has Francis in play. That's it. And he has Redrick. I'm working by in play. The two cards have. Like, I'm not disagreeing that I'm the threat here. Okay, so I, I'm I'm memeing, but apparently he 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 can deal with me. So it's. His decision to not target me here, apparently, first. And after me, I, I think... I mean, yeah, I, yeah think, I, I think it's Agent Tomb. That's strongest. But I... That's just, yeah, hard to say. I, yeah, I think I do answer you the best, so I'm the least concerned about you at this moment. This is so amazing. I never heard this before. I love it. <laughs> if you're turning sideways and I've got big dudes, eventually I will overwhelm you. I am going to... Yeah, I think Thrasios isn't the biggest problem right now. It's going to be a land. We should do rock, I, wait. We should do rock paper scissors <laughs> between, between Redrick and Pontus. The one that loses gets a land blown up. So I actually have a thought process for this. <laughs> um, I'm going to hit Pontus's ancient tomb, and my reasoning behind this is because every time Pontus says words in a game that I'm with him. <laughs> And somebody listens to him, it costs us the game. <laughs> Poor Pontus. That... <laughs> this is exactly the reasoning I get by tournament players, by the way. Just by far. <laughs> In tournaments. Does that sure, logic track, my land though? is dead. <laughs> no. All right. Okay, untap and draw a card. Land for turn is Breeding Pool. 
shock it into play, take two life. I have no other effects after this. I am going to move through to my end step and pass. I'm gonna draw a card for turn. I am going to begin. So Keith is currently like challenging me in my sideways capabilities. So we are attacking at Keith with our commander, triggering his ability, discarding Library of Ling to the uh, graveyard, putting a counter on him and flipping into a land. I will choose not to block at this moment. Second main phase, tap this for a red cost. Thrill of possibilities as an additional cost. Discard his uh, mountain, increase his power and flip into a Jeska's will apparently. So I currently don't have enough mana to cost Jeska's will if I play this land. So we're gonna let this land here disappear into permanent exile and play this land for the turn instead. One, two, and the last one from Ruby Medallion by reducing it, casting Jeska's Will. Targeting six uh, for Keith. So I generate six red mana and I exile a Stranglehold, a Seating Song, and a Pyroblast. We are going to use two mana to cast Seating Song, generating five more. We are not going to cast these spells yet. We're gonna leave them over here in our collection because we might need the mana. Because we are going to cast a Unwold Breach. And now I don't have a hand anymore. So I have a pretty decent collection of cards in my graveyard and I have some huge amount of mana. I don't know exactly if I'm gonna be able to squeeze out a win here because my hand is literally gone. So the only way to like win here is by casting a Jeska's Will a few times and just hope there's something on the top that will work out. So for exactly one, two mana, cast Jeska's Will, exiling one, two, three cards, gaining another six red going up to 12 and exiling one Stormkiln Artist, Anger, and Treasonous Ogre. The problem with those cards is that none of them actually, none of them actually fuel cards to my hand. So I think what we're going to do is first spend four red mana, no, sorry, three red mana, and cast the Storm Kiln Artist. You know what? While we're at it, we might as well just cast Treasonous Ogre as well. So now we can pay life to gain more red mana. So currently I have four cards in my graveyard, Lotus Petal, Sitting Song, Fring of Possibilities, and Jeska's Will, and I have three cards in my Exile that I can cast, Anger, Pyroblast, and Stranglehold. I need to increase my graveyard a tiny bit because I don't want to exile Lotus Petal in this current state from the grave, so we're gonna spend one red to cast Pyroblast, and I'm actually going to... I mean, he's just gonna recast the big thing, I guess. I'm going to destroy... I can't... So he challenged me, and I kind of want to see his potential. It might be the wrong the play. Maybe it is the correct play to actually destroy the Cascade thing. But I also kind of want to see what that leads, because I've actually never played against the commander. So I'm going to destroy Frasius here. Yep, no response. I also gain a treasure from this uh, storm kill artist, so that spell was basically for free. I'm gonna use two red and cast Jeska's Will again, generating a treasure in doing so. Targeting Keith, generating six more uh, red mana, exiling a Arche Signet, a land, and a Glinthorn Bakunir. We're going to cast the Glinthorn Bakunir, we're going to cast the RNK Signet. Now we are sadly out of grave. So in our grave we have Lotus Petal and Jeska's Will. And like we can't keep going. We can't activate Glinthorn Bakunir at our current state. Because we don't have a hand. So what to do. So we're going to stop here. The last thing we're gonna do is cast Stranglehold. And then we... I could crack some treasures to cast Anger. But we're gonna let Anger go into permanent exile. Because I kind of just want to keep these treasures. And then this land will go into permanent exile. And here, after this, I end my turn. Undul Breach will go to my grave. And you could say, I shouldn't have fired off. Because I the chance of me winning there wasn't that likely. However, I developed a really big board state. And I dug through my deck quite efficiently to the two. I found some key pieces, like now suddenly I have a Glintorn. I have a Storm Kiln. I have Treasonous Ogre and Stranglehold, so I'm sitting in a very good position, even though I didn't win from that Storm attempt. Next turn, though. Go to my turn. Cast the Lotus Battle as land for turn. 
Crack Lotus Petal to cast my Wonderful Commander. And then pass turn. Alright, untap, do the stuff. We're going to play a Boseju who shelters all, comes in tapped. I'm going to pay two, play a Talisman, and thinks I pass the turn. Take my turn, draw a card for turn. Land for turn will be Bloodstained Mire. What's nice is because of the Yavamaya land, it is a forest, so we can keep it. I'm going to pass. Go to my turn, draw a card. All right, time to go to combat. I'm going to announce my commander at Pontus feels dead. <laughs> at Keith, Glintorn at Redrick, Treasonous Ogre at Redrick, and uh, Storm Kiln at Redrick as well. So we have a really amazing setup, and Treasonous Ogre here as well to just gain the mana we need to continue doing this Yankee thing. So we are going to activate Glintorn Buccaneer, paying two mana. Discard this card. It was kind of interesting to actually maybe cast it, but we are discarding it. This is going to trigger my commander, and I'm going to increase Glintorn's power by one. Also reveal a delayed fire blast to my exile. Let's put it there. Draw a card, and then deal one damage to all of my opponents because of Glintorn. Now, theoretically, we could keep doing this for quite a while, considering... I mean, I can't sit and pay life with my Treasonous Ogre to keep paying for Glintorn. It's basically six life for me to activate Glintorn again. I will die before my opponents, but maybe we will draw into something great here. Regardless, we are activating Glintorn again, discarding this mountain, putting a counter on Glintorn, drawing a new card, and exiling a new card. Mox Diamond. We have some life. Let's start using life. I'm paying six life to activate Glintorn again, discarding this thing. Triggering our commander, boosting Glintorn, flipping into Magna, uh, Mana Geyser, and drawing a new card. I don't want to stay here, I, I don't feel pressured. Life is a resource and it's time to use that resource, pay 6 more life. Discarding Chain Reaction, flipping into a... Oh, this is actually kind of something. This is good. Draw a card and boost Glintorn. However, here I want to stop. And let's proceed to Blockers. I declare no blockers. No blocks. I will take 11 damage. Second main phase, I'm going to cast Mox Diamond, uh, triggering Mox Diamond to discard this land, which will trigger Glintorn to do one damage and exile a new card, which is gonna be Mox Amber. <laughs> and I mean, we're definitely gonna cast Mox Amber as well, putting it over here somewhere. We're going to begin with casting the Valakut Awakening, generating a new treasure. This is basically going to just put a card into my hand, which ended up being a land, so let's put land into play. Stranglehold is only affecting my opponents, so I will crack my Scalding Tarn to find a normal basic snow-covered mountain. Then tap this, consume a treasure, which we're gaining a treasure afterwards, and casting Delayed Fireball, fireball or Delayed Blast Fireball, which is casted from Exile, which means it's gonna do its secondary mode of dealing 5 damage to all my opponents and all of my opponents' creatures. And after all of this mess, I'm actually passing the turn. Go for it, Pontus. Pass. <laughs> okay, I'll untap. <laughs> Alright, untap. Oh, that's actually not the worst draw. We're going to play a Mox Opal. Okay, I think my best play is two for scroll rack and then pass the turn at the end of your turn i have a response i am going to tap my mana uh, i will make blue from this and then tap the rest of these for forest colors because of java maya and i'm going to auto war a stranglehold no response it stranglehold goes to my hand i guess i can discard it take my turn we'll untap then return will be misty rainforest but i don't want to pay more life because I'm already being punched in the face a couple times. So what we're going to do is use that as a forest. We will then pay for forest, mind you, sinking X2 into X, casting Finale Devastation for two. Finale of Dockside, I mean, Devastation uh, resolves. I'll go find Dockside. In response to the trigger, I'm going to sacrifice my three treasures, generating three red. Uh, being respectful of Dockside, I'm sitting in a great position and it's very stupid to just toss it away to this, so yeah. So with the Dockside ETB, I will make eight treasures. All right, so I am going to crack five treasures first and cast Elena. And it might seem a bit odd, but I'm not 
going to cast Thrasios. Yes, I do not want to do that this turn. So I'm just going to sit back with four mana available. And that's it. Go ahead. That means my turn. Untap and draw a card. So apparently I don't need to attack Pontus at all. He's dead. Keith? Like, I don't know what that deck is actually doing. So it, a good thing sometimes to do is kill a deck that you don't understand. Just to be safe. But I think that his deck is more or less focused on big creatures and having his commander in play. And I'm not scared of something coming into play now, so to say. Like, his commander is dead, he doesn't have haste. Redrick is starting to develop. Like, if he's sitting on a Cloudstone Kuryu, he wins next turn or something. I. It feels like it's time to kill Redrick here. That's my kind of take. Because I do think that Redrick might be the first one among my three, my two opponents, if I'm gonna be honest. Sorry, Pontus, my three, two opon opponents that is going to attempt to win the soonest. You kill the biggest threat first. Now, because she actually has first strike, I'm not attacking with Stormkill Artist or Treasonous Ogre. They can go to Keith, while my commander and Galinthorn are both going at Redrick. But before blockers, we're going to pay two and discard Ragavan to Glinthorn. In response, I'm going to pay two and we're going to trick bind your Glinthorn. This is really mean. Okay, yeah, so I can't respond to that. So I can't activate Glinthorn again and I can't activate Glinthorn anymore this turn. So yeah, that happens. However, I still discarded a card. So Glinthorn will still trigger and my commander will also still trigger, putting a counter on commander and exiling a... Reiterate. That is kind of sad. I kind of want to have Reiterate in my hand. However, I still have my commander ability trigger that I declined because I... Discarding a rand... Discarding Stranglehold to my commander to gain a random card or put this pretty decent stacks piece into play. I'm gonna go with putting this pretty decent stacks piece into play instead of having a random card from my uh, top of the deck doing something. So yeah, not discarding Stranglehold and not using the commander's ability. Really? You're asking if I declare blockers? Really? <laughs> I will block with Dockside, your Glenhorn Buccaneer. Then tapping free in post combat main phase, casting Stranglehold, this goes to exile permanently, and here I pass the turn. Trick bind. Take my turn. Oh, play land for turn. Tap two for a talisman of indulgence and pass. During his end step, I have something to do, actually. Uh, during his end step, I'm going to Lose two life, and I'm going to scroll rack. Setting two cards aside, picking up two cards, and then if I recall the way it works is these go on top. So we put them on top. I'm all right with this. Now we can go to my turn. Untap, upkeep, draw. I have to take some damage, unfortunately, from uh, my mana vault. All right, I will play an island. I will take some more damage because of my Boseju. I will play Green Warden of Marasa. Green Warden, enter. I will bring... I think Beast Within goes to my hand. Not that I could play the Trick Bind either. So I will pass the turn there. Untap and draw a card. First game action, I will crack these three treasures, put them right in the grave, making green. I will make two more green and one more for good measure. I'm going to cast Great Oak Guardian. Great Oak Guardian resolves. So we have some stuff to do on ETB first. Once it hits the battlefield with the Great Oak Guardian trigger on the stack, it says uh, creatures target player controls gets plus two, plus two until end of turn and untap them. So um, I will first use Elena's ability to tap this and make four red. And then with Great Oak Guardian, his ability, this will become a six, seven, and I will untap Elena. Elena will also become six, five. With those abilities resolved, I will now tap Elena again and activate it once again, making this time six more mana going up to 12 oh no sorry uh 10 then i will use three of that to go down to seven to cast staff of domination no! staff of domination resolves and fellas you've seen this before but what we can start to do with elena and the mana we have is begin to create an infinite loop with elena and staff of domination because we have great oak guardian Every time we tap a land, we will make six mana. We can use that to untap Staff of Domination and then untap Elena and over and over make this stuff. So what we can eventually do is generate enough to draw our deck. We don't even need Thrasios in this case, or we can sink Thrasios into it later on. 
but we can just eventually draw into something like walking ballista, which I typically do with this, and then waste you from as a result. GG's. All right, so what's interesting about this, this is my second win in a row as player number four. I'm gonna be honest, I was pretty out of that game and we could talk in a minute about this decision of killing Thrasios or lands and stuff that we had with Keith's Beast Within. But um, I, I know if my land had been destroyed, I would have been totally out of this game. So once I was able to get Finale of Devastation because of bouncing Ottawara and then get that Dockside into play, that helped me get a little bit of a head because I needed to cast Elena with I had Great Oak Guardian and Staff of Domination just sitting in my hand from pretty early on. So it was interesting to just accelerate, right? And once again, if you are fourth, sometimes it does benefit you if people kind of get a lot of rocks into play and things like that. I mean, I, I think uh, the I argument would... of being fourth also helps you say, hey guys, I'm the last person in turn order, don't based within me. Sorry, Keith, you were about to say something. I was actually going to say that I could have trick binded your um, dock side, but I was thinking that if you got your dock side off, Mons would have turned all of his creatures on you and would have probably killed you. And I was hoping he was going to do that, but he didn't. I don't <laughs> think he would have died. He was down at 10 life, and you took... I attacked you with two creatures, and if those would have gone mm -hmm. to Rhetoric, and he didn't block those, he would have taken six more and got out to four, so he wouldn't die. So he, yes, he, he would die next would have. Well, I would have let your Glinthorn resolve until he died, and then I would have stopped Ah, him. yeah. I see. Because I would have just been, watched his health dwindle and been like, okay, now you can stop. Yeah, I'd probably but would have this. <laughs> but I don't know if I have enough mana to like discard all the way down. Maybe I would have done that, depending on what I draw into. Yeah. Okay, I can see. I can see. Yeah, treasonous ogre. Yeah, you're right. you're actually right. I agree. I yeah. I could have killed him there if I swung all out on him. I want to talk about our uh, these two commanders. Let's just begin with mine. It was first time playing this. I have to say I really like it. I enjoy the play style, the play pattern you get with it. However, I can see that you're developing into a very good game flow, but the deck struggles in finishing, I would say. You're drawing a lot of cards, you're gaining a lot of momentum, like you're doing, you're producing, but you're not squeezing out the win efficiently enough, and that's where another deck like you, Rhetoric, you were able to just, okay, you didn't win on your turn, my turn, I win. That's my current take. That's kind of the curse of being mono red. Like mono red doesn't have good win cons, basically, nor mm. good tutors or like good strategies. Yeah, I mean, you had so much value though. All that stuff with that Jessica's will and underworld breach. I mean, I was convinced you were eventually going to find your way into, you know, some impulsive draw win. And so it was interesting to see, and then to have just a couple creatures you can smash over. It just seems like an interesting combination of storm and you know, punching, essentially. I have to agree. Like, okay. even these small creatures became pretty big. Because, like, okay, mm -hmm. I'm discarding a card, I'm putting a counter on something, and it's growing. Did I... I've misplayed. Reading a card explains oh. a card. Whenever you attack, you may discard a card. When you do, put the plus one plus one counter on this on a target creature. I accidentally put a counter whenever I discarded something. So the counter actually only happens when attack with this creature. Not when I discard. I would not have killed anyone this game with some beats. Judge! Judge! <laughs> Ban that guy. <laughs> Live and learn! Hey, you're human. It's a new card too, you know? Yeah. It's, mm -hmm. it's tricky. Like, What about Francis Pontus? Uh, Mardu, Akiri and the uh, Pirate Birdie. It's... Yeah, like Francisco, clearly best card in the format, best commander <laughs> in the format. Sadly, Lurus really lets the deck down. I expect, like, Lurus, you, you see another creature in command zone, you think, yeah, that's sweet. Then you realize you can't have Necro. Yeah, the deck is just trash then. So I, I don't know why they play that. But Francisco, clearly carried. <laughs> <laughs> I was actually winning the turn after my land was blown up. <laughs> <laughs> we made a correct decision to destroy you in other games. Hey, re remember when Pontus says words, he wins the game if people listen to him. I, I needed to top the right card, and I did. I just didn't have any other resources left. Alright everyone, that's all we have for today's video. See you next time. Peace. <laughs>